Hello, in this lecture we will discuss the accounting building blocks and the double entry accounting system. At the end of this we will be able to define and describe the double entry accounting system, write down the accounting equation and define each individual part of it, define and describe debits and credits, define a balance sheet and list its parts, define an income statement, list its parts, and explain the relationship between the balance sheet and the income statement. Okay, so starting off, every business and accounting software uses the double entry accounting system. So the double entry accounting system is kind of like the math behind the calculator. Every software is going to use it. In order to understand what the system is doing, we need to understand the double entry accounting system. Many people can work in the accounting department and, and start to learn uh, database programs and how to enter data without understanding the double entry accounting system. And that's possible. You can learn a lot that way, but you become a lot more valuable and you can become a lot more uh, attuned to what other departments are doing and how things fit together if you can understand the double entry accounting system. Similarly to you get a lot more understanding if when you punch, you know, two plus two into a calculator, you understand why the answer came out to wait. It came out and that gives you some insight in terms of decision makings and how to help things out. So that's what we'll discuss that double entry accounting system as we go. So we're going to compare this to a puzzle. So I want to think of the double entry account system being that we're going to compare it to kind of a game here, a puzzle. We got to first learn the rules of the game, how the, how the thing is set up. We want to know what the board is. We want to know what the pieces are. We want to know how to set the pieces on the board, then how to move them. Once we know that, then it becomes a lot more interesting for us to, to play the game, just as it would be for a game of checkers. So a game of checkers is obviously on a spreadsheet. We have different colored pieces and we have different colored squares, we move those pieces in accordance to a set of rules. The set of rules for accounting are that we have a T account. So our spreadsheet is not a spreadsheet like checkers. It's going to be basically a T account. We'll use various T accounts as we go. The rules of the game is we're going to have debits are on the left-hand side, credits are on the right-hand side. Debits and credits aren't inherently good. They're just like the black and uh, white or whatever the color squares are on the board. They have no inherent um, goodness or badness. They just happen to be this is on uh, the left hand side debits on the left credits on the right then we need to know how the pieces line up so what are the pieces assets liabilities and owner's equity so the green accounts are going to be asset type accounts here and notice that they line up on the left hand side they are debit normal balances for the most part liabilities are credit normal balances for the most part which i have on the right hand side and i'm also going to start showing them with brackets and then equity section is generally on uh, the right-hand side includes uh, capital, revenues on the right-hand side, and then expenses on the left-hand side. Then we have the, the concept of balancing that you've heard of, and that concept means that the total debits equal the total credits. There's going to be different ways that we can think about that balancing concept, but that's the board. These are the pieces we need to understand, and then we can talk about how to move those pieces, and those are the building blocks that we need to know and understand and basically memorize before we can play the game, just like we would have to memorize how to set up the board, how to move the pieces in a game of checkers or a game of chess. So the other rules that we're going to start to come in to play will be that every business transaction will affect at least two accounts. These are our accounts in this case. Uh, and every transaction will have an equal number of debits and credits. Those are the rules. All right, so first we're going to take a look at the balance sheet here. Just to note that the balance sheet, we've seen that we have assets, liabilities, and owner's equity. We can see that this balancing concept that we talked about, that total debits and credits, can also be expressed in terms of total assets equal total liabilities and owner's equity. So the balance sheet is going to report our information as of a point in time. And, and so it doesn't have a time frame. It doesn't have a beginning and an end. It's as of this point in time. It shows our assets, liabilities, and owner's equity. Assets are what we're going to own in order to generate revenue in the future. We have those to help us generate revenue in the future. Cash is probably the first thing you want to think of when you think of assets. And then liabilities are something that we're going to owe uh, in the future, either uh, cash owed to the in the future or our services or something in the future for something that we consumed or bought in the past. And equity represents the book value of the company or the amount that's owed to the owner. So you can also think of it as the assets are what the company has. These are who they owe it to, the either a third party or the owner. That's why the assets equal the liabilities and the owner's equity. Now you might be saying, well, I don't see debits and credits in this statement, and we just talked about debits and credits being the building block. And the reason we don't see debits and credits here is because we're presenting the financial statements generally to people that may not understand the debits and credits. So we need to present it in a plus and minus format. We're going to use the building blocks of debits and credits to create the financial statements so that we can then show those financial statements 
in a different format, which is going to be assets equal liabilities plus owner's equity, because that'll be easier for others to understand. If we were to look at the balance sheet in terms of debits and credits, it would look something like this, meaning that the assets are generally uh, debits. Here's our T account again. And we would see that the, we can see that the assets add up to 78 and the credits are generally liabilities and owner's equity. This is a simplified system. Uh, later on, so some assets will be credits, but for the most part, this is how it would line up. Assets are all debit balance accounts in this example. And so we can see the double entry accounting system in a few different ways. We can see that the debits equal the credits here. And we can also see that the assets equal the liabilities plus the owner's equity. And we can express that in terms of debits. We can express the double entry accounting system in terms of the debits equal the credits or the assets equal the liabilities plus the owner's equity, or the balance sheet is in balance. So those are three ways we can say basically the same thing. Notice that the balance sheet is assets, liabilities, and owner's equity. The balance sheet is the double entry accounting system. It has all the components of the accounting equation, the accounting equation being assets equal liabilities plus owner's equity. We can also write that accounting equation as three different ways. Algebraically, we can subtract liabilities from each side and that would be assets minus liabilities equals owner's equity. This is a useful way to write it because it tells us uh, that, that this owner's equity is the book value. If the, if the company has 78,000, they owe someone else 10, then owner's equity is 68,000. The owner, if it's one person, theoretically could sell the business and walk away with 68,000. Uh, income statement shows the profitability of a company over a year or other time frame. So notice the income statement, the big thing you want to note here is that it, it has a time frame. In this case, the month ended here. So that means December 31st. That means the time frame is from December 1st to December 31st. And the way you want to think about that is, is the income statement is kind of like, how did you do over time? Similar to running a race. And when you, when you run a race, it's, it has to have a beginning and an end. Or if we were to ask someone, how much money do you make? They would have to make an assumption. Are you talking about a year? Are you talking about a month? Are you talking about a pay period? We need a time frame in order to answer those types of questions because the income statement itself is dealing with how are we doing over a certain time. Notice we have revenue and we have expenses here. And how do we calculate it? We say, how much did you make? How much did it cost to uh, generate that revenue in terms of expenses? Therefore, revenue minus expenses gives us our net income. And so there's our net income. Once again, you don't see debits and credits on the financial statement because we're going to give it to people that may not know debits and credits. If we were to look at the debit and credit format of an income statement, we can see that credits are actually the income is actually a credit. And here's our T account again, and the debits are expenses. So we can see that the credits in this case are beating the debits by uh, the net income. And you might be saying, well, that's kind of weird. What we, we thought that the debits and credits have to be in balance in order for the double entry accounting system to work. Is there something wrong with this statement? Why is it that I don't see the double entry accounting system having an equal number of debits and credits on the income statement? And why is it I don't see the, any of the uh, equation accounts here? I don't see assets, liabilities, or owner's equity. All I see is revenue and expenses. How is it that the income statement fits into the double entry accounting system and is part of the double entry accounting system? And the answer to that is that the whole income statement is part of the balance sheet. So we got to remember that the balance sheet is as of a snapshot, as of a point in time. So as of this point in time, you are watching this video. If there, you can't change that, it is what it is. It's there. If you want to know how you got to this point in time watching the video, well, we then have to go back in some time frame and say, well, you woke up at this point in time. We, we did that. We did the other thing and we ended up watching this video for whatever reason. That's the story of how it came to be. In this case, we're saying that the assets minus the liability means we have a book value of 68,000 here. Uh, that is what it is. Can't change it as of 1231. It is what it is. Can't change it. If we want to know how we got there, then we tell the story. We can say, well, you know, last month we made 100,000 of revenue and we had to expend 60,000 in order to do it. So last month we earned 40,000. That 68,000 right there includes 40,000 from last month. If you want to know more of the story, then we'll have to go back to the prior month and look at the income statement for the prior month. We can go back years and look at the story in terms of how are we performing year over year in order to get to the place that we are currently at. 
Now, if we, if we broke down this number a little bit more, you notice this number, we're just breaking down this number into its history, basically, in terms of, of income generation. And if we look, take this back to the trial balance, the trial balance is what we gener what we use to generate uh, the financial statements. We can see that this capital account includes the beginning capital. That's what was owed to the owner before the time period being, in this case, uh, November 30th, the end of last time period, because this time period began on December 1st to December 31st. So this is what was owed to the owner before we started. And then we had the, the uh, revenue minus the expenses. So we got the beginning balance plus the revenue minus the expenses. That's how we're getting to our ending capital number. So if you think of this in terms of the balance sheet, you notice we have our assets, which would add up to the assets on the balance sheet, the liabilities, and then really this whole thing is, is the equity section. If we added up this whole blue area, that would be the equity section on the balance sheet here. And part of that equity is the income statement there on the trial balance.